Joining me now is Matt Doherty, Wolves footballer. Uh, Matt, you played Swansea City last night in the FA Cup. Uh, unfortunately lost, but does that really focus you now on the promotion race for Wolves? The game in general last night, we started off quite slowly, actually. Didn't get going at all in the first half. I know we made quite a few changes from the normal league team. Um, but then second half, we got into it more, made a couple of changes, brought on Jota and Bonatini. Um, made a big difference, so I obviously got the goal. Um, but then we just conceded and we weren't able to get back into it. it was, uh, but it's not the end of the world. Yeah, I'll get, I want to get on to the, the team and the style a little bit, but I want to bring it right back to when that move happened to Wolverhampton Ones. You were playing for Bohemians. Um, I believe you were still working for your, for your dad at the same time. Pre-season friendly against Mick McCarthy's Wolves. And he obviously seen something that he, that he very much liked that day. Was... Was it was it on your agenda to be going to England? Did you think, or did you have aspirations to go across, or did it come out of the blue? No, I always had aspirations. Um, I had been as a sixteen year old. I had been on many trials, double figure trials in terms of teams, um, but it just never quite clicked for me. Um, I'll admit now that I never really performed when I had gone away. Um, so I, yeah, you're right. I was working with my dad doing carpet and upholstery cleaning, and um, and rug cleaning is quite tough. Um, but I mean, I quite enjoyed it going around with my dad every day and the chats that we used to have in the van of, um, oh, I still had ambitions for me to go away, but it would have been more through, because as I was getting older, more through the League of Ireland set up, um, I still thought I could get away that way. Yeah, I want, um, I want to touch on that, yeah. Matt, as well, a bit in terms of the underage. And you, did you feel at that stage when you were 16, 17 that potentially you'd, you'd missed the boat? I know there's been a lot done in the last couple of years with the underage structure and it's probably better, it's certainly better now than it was when I was I was playing at that age. I felt if I didn't get across the water at 15, 16, then I certainly would have missed the boat because after that very few go, but you are now one of those examples and having worked in the underage setup with the FEI for the last couple of years, they do have the option now of staying further in the education and going over that little bit more mature maybe. Uh, yeah, well, obviously, initially when you're 16, you see people your age, Robbie Brady, Jeff Hendricks, um, go away, um, and others who obviously have come back now, haven't quite made it. Yeah, you do start to think, well, is it gone for me? Um, but like I said, I always had a belief that I could get there through the League of Ireland. It might, it wasn't, didn't come as quick as I thought. Um, when it came at 18, I thought it would be more 21 when it might happen, 22. Um, so yeah, there is more of an opportunity now. I, when I went at eighteen, like I was past the homesickness. That w- wasn't an issue at all. I was I was desperate to get over. Um, I was more mature, having been around with my dad in the van, seen what real work was like. So when I went over at eighteen, then I mean I really tried to, to grasp the opportunity um, when it came, which which helps. Which helps when you see when I'm going around with my dad. Yeah, I see I see all the work that you have to do. Um, so when you go over there, it really makes you think. I don't want to give this chance up at all. Yeah, look, I totally agree with you. How how much of an influence were, and how much of a help were the Irish lads that were already over there? Obviously, Wolves has a, a huge kind of connection with Irish players. Um, the likes of Kevin Doyle, Stephen Hunt, Kevin Foley, Wardy was there at the, at the same time as well, wasn't he? Mick, obviously, the manager. Did that help with your kind of introduction into the club? Did they help you out? Yeah, it helped unbelievably. Um, either you even had boys, Aaron McCary, Anthony Ford, they're my age. Um, and even a couple of boys younger, but it was, uh, oh no, them boys, you know, sure you know, they're like Hunty, Doyle, they, they welcome anybody in. Um, they don't have any, any kind of ego about them at all. Even now, I'm still friends, with, as you know, to Hunty to this day. Um, we've kept in contact quite a bit. Um, so yeah, they were a, a massive, massive help. Even the manager himself, obviously, Mick, brought me over, helped me in many ways. So it was all, um, it was all good from their behalf. And speaking of Mick, Mick was your first, obviously, <laughs> and first of many. Yeah. You've gone through <laughs> quite a few. And look, the championship, being the championship, that is very much the nature. But you've gone through Mick, Solbeck, and Saunders, Lambert, Walter Zenge. You, you must have taken a lot from those managers. But when the new manager comes in the door, do you think I have to tweak the way I play because he may want me to play a different way? Or do you have you simply kind of thought... No, I, I need to be Matt Doherty. These are my strengths, and this is what I stand for. Is a bit of a a bit of a mixture, maybe. I've honestly, I've never tweaked how I've thought about playing. Um, no manager has come to me and said, "Listen, you need to think about your defending a little bit more." Because obviously, I'm like going forward. Um, they've never said to me, "You need to do this. You need to do that." 
they've just kind of let me get on with it. And obviously, they've co- a few of them have coached me along the way in terms of a little improvement here or there positionally. Um, but none of them have got in the way of me trying to play my natural game at all. Um, so, yeah, I've been quite fortunate that way. You spoke about a position. I read an article about you. I think it was around this time last year, and you spoke about that again. So, was that is that something you're conscious of? And I know the way Wolves play is very, very attacking. And this year, you've had to tweak it in terms of you're a wing back now, a right wing back. Last year, you were playing a lot as left back in a four, back four. So, in terms of that position, it does change obviously in the system you're playing at the moment, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, it does. Obviously, I'm a lot more forward. But in terms of me defensively. Um, I was never an out-and-out defender growing up. I was more of a forward player. Um, so I don't have that natural defending instinct all the time. Um, so to say the cross comes in, the keeper looks like he's going to catch it. I'm already kind of running out, outwards thinking we're going to break here instead of thinking what if he drops it. Um, that's happened to me a few times. So that's why defensively I've always got to switch on and always got to be thinking. Where, Matt, where did that come from? Did that come from an early age in terms of your your apprenticeship? You were, you were learning at Kevin's, Bohemian's. Was that early days at Wolves? Because I'd certainly imagine someone like Mick, who's a very kind of he's very focused as an ex defender. That would be something that he would be very very particular about. Yeah, it was just, it was all younger age. Um, I used to be a striker. I used to play midfield, right wing. I never used to really play at the back until I got to about. 16, 7, more 17, 18. Um, so it's just, I guess, just habit over the years. Growing up, just thinking I want to score goals. Um, and obviously you can see that part in my game in terms of going forward, which I enjoy, obviously, a lot. Um, but I've just got to, stay, got to stay focused in terms of the defending to not always switch off, which I have done in the past. <laughs> um, I want to move on to this season then and the style of play this year. Nuno Espirito Santo comes in to Wolves and as you know I, I see a lot of the championship he came into the same bracket as Thomas Christensen at Leeds and Daniel Farrakh in terms of relative unknowns okay his, his CV was, was more impressive in terms of the clubs that he's, he's managed Valencia being, being the, the biggest one um, what were your first impressions? He obviously has done a magnificent job so, but in those first few days first few weeks in pre-season what, what were your impression of him? Well, I was probably, like everybody, a bit sceptical, not sure what to expect um, because we've had the record of having foreign managers come in and not do so well was was as relevant in terms of the previous managers. Um, so, yeah, I was a bit cautious to see how he'd approach it, but you could tell early doors um, that he knew he knew what he was doing, the way he, ch- he came in and started changing things on the training ground straight away. Um changed our shape straight away we went at it from day one in pre-season and we've not we've not um, gone away from it since um, and you know when, when you're changing the shape with new players in, especially in pre-season it doesn't always come off and he had the belief to just stick with it um, I mean we played Shrewsbury in pre-season and we had a tough time we, they, they beat us um, and the shape didn't look didn't look too, cle- too clever then and, and we just stuck with it um, into the first game of the season and eventually it all paid off now, anybody that hasn't seen a lot of views this season might not be fully aware of the style of play. We've already mentioned you play as, as the right wing back, very, very high, very, very adventurous, very, very attacking. It's a back three. And I don't think people realise in terms of the core of that team. You've obviously brought in a lot of players, Neves for big money, 15 million. Last season was held at Costa for 13 million. But there's a core of British, Irish players, yourself, Ruddy, Connor Cody. I know Danny Barth hasn't played a lot this season, but he's the club captain. How important has that that um, that spine of the team been in terms of integrating all the foreign imports? It has been. We, like you said, we've got Ruddy, Ryan Bennett, uh, Danny Cody, even Barry Douglas, who had a stint up in Scotland. Um, players who are familiar with British football, um, familiar with going through winter playing game after game where them boys where the foreign boys are more used to having time off um, so just helping them in terms of uh, preparation how we would prepare for a Saturday Tuesday where they might not be used to it um, is very important and the manager can see that obviously if he didn't see that then he probably would have brought in more players to f- fill them positions um, so I think in the championship it is quite it is quite important to have a British Irish Irish base 
I must confess, going, going back maybe uh, a couple of months ago, two, three months ago, after you'd made that really good start and you started to get into a real rhythm and, and the performances, obviously the results followed, but the, the, the type of performance and how well it, and easy it was on the eye, I thought, well, your only downfall for me could be if the foreign lads, who I don't know personally, who I don't see behind the scenes, if that maybe they might be a little bit solar powered, so the clocks go back, the yellow balls come out, could, could they deal with that? But th for me, they've answered every question. I've been really impressed with teams that have tried to maybe bully you, tried to put you on the back foot, try and alter how you play. They've, they've certainly come through those tests, haven't they, over the last couple of months? Yeah, with absolute flying colours. I mean, just look at the unbeaten run we've been on. It's come all through winter as well. Um, and when you say getting bullied, we got bullied against Cardiff early on. Um, and they beat us and then after that man just said let's make sure this never happens again and I think all the players realised and thought you know what I'm up, I'm up for the fight here um, and they thought a lot of the games would be like that it's not panned out that way um, but I mean there will be times again when we play Cardiff away um, when we play Villa away that it's going to be a dog fight and I think the boys are up for it Moving on to international football I, I can sense and I've, I've been in your predicaments where maybe You've, you've been frustrated that the opportunity hasn't come along. Um, do you now see this transitional time that the, the team is going to go through with friendlies on the horizon? Um, do you see it as a big opportunity to stake a claim in the, in the squad? Uh, yeah, of course. Um, I think they're playing Turkey in, in March. I've seen an opportunity if I can get in the squad to maybe get a cap and, and show what I can do. Um, I'm doing everything I can at club level to try and put my put myself in the, in the window for it. Um, so I'll just keep, obviously keep just doing that. And if it happens, if it happens and if it doesn't, then so be it. It's, uh, international was obviously tough to get into into a squad considering there's quite a few players to choose from. But um, if I get in there, I, I back myself to to perform and and, and, be, and do good. You, you, I'm with you in terms of I'm not quite sure how much more you can do you're playing in the best team in the championship you've been very very consistent I think year on year you're improving in terms of your performances yes there is competition there with the likes of Seamus obviously coming back from injury Cyrus Christie Stephen Ward but surely your versatility as well um, I, I think you're, you're clearly confident that you can you can play in a, in a green short yeah of course I mean I've never ever that would, what I can do. Um, I'm not big headed or cocky or nothing like that. I just have confidence in in my own game. Um, and like you said, I can play either side. I played left back for the, for two years before the season um, season started, so I'm quite comfortable at either side. And I enjoy both sides. Um, it's not like I'm disgusted at the thought of having to go onto the left hand side. I quite in, enjoy playing there. Um, so yeah, you would think that that would stand me in good stead going forward. You you were um, you've been named in plenty of squads. Um, don't always make the final cut, such as the enormity of some of the squads that that Martin chooses to to go with. Um, when you were in the squad and you did train with the team and you were part of it, did it whet your appetite that you can be part of that? You can be a key player for us going forward in the next campaign. Uh, yeah, I mean, because I'm looking at it and I'm thinking oh, I can pl I can play in this team. That's how I, that's how I feel. Um, and you're just thinking once you get in, get a bit of confidence that you're in the squad, in the team, um, and then your game can really come out. Like it's like anything in in sport, confidence is everything. Um, so once you get in and get comfortable with the squad, then a lot of good things can happen. Matt, listen, thank you very, very much for for joining us on the Keith Andrews Football Show. Wish you the very best of luck. Hope you get promotion, and I sincerely hope you're wearing that green jersey very soon. Cheers, Keith. Thanks for having me.